So hi everyone, welcome on the second day. I hope that you have a great first day. Uh, I know it's quite early in the morning, but I'll do my best not to put you to sleep, at least not all of you. So what I would like to talk today is uh, Embed Studio. That's the new ID that we were working on. And I will take you today on a journey up to through like the beginning of the first ID that we're looking into and all the way up to the current one that is based on FIA. Yesterday we had lots of great presentations, mostly focusing on uh, browser usage of FIA. Today we'll focus a little bit more about the desktop side of it. So very quickly, uh, I need to mention ARM, so that's the company I work for. My name is uh, Akar Zorowski. I'm based in Cambridge. So ARM is a multinational company. The headquarter is the based in Cambridge. There is around 6,000 uh, employees spread all around the world. And what ARM is doing is designing the architecture. And then we are working very closely with our partners who are actually distributing the microcontrollers based on our architecture. So what we can see on this slide is uh, what we are aiming for. So the, there is a plan to have one trillion devices up to the year of 2035. So we don't have much time, it's around 16 years from now. And so on the next slide, we can actually see the progression of the connected uh, devices and the cumulative number is planned to be around uh, 1 trillion. So at the moment we are in 2019, uh, which is still quite early and the very important part uh, of uh, it is we will not be able to achieve it to, together with our partners without the very good tooling. So that's what uh, I would like to uh, focus on during this presentation. So a little bit also about the IoT. So in ARM, we have the Internet of, of Things business unit. So that's uh, where I'm primarily based. We have heard so many things about IoT. I know that probably everyone heard about intelligent fridges that's, or automotive, that's very common. My favorite example that I always think about is more uh, simple one something that can actually help uh, solve just the little problem. So imagine that you have a backpack and inside of this backpack you have very small embedded device with the sensor that can just sense the moisture level. And you can ask what you can solve. So when I was younger, uh, when I was still going to school, I tend to leave my sandwiches at the end of the school year. And then after the long summer, which in Poland is quite long, that's where I come from, it's around two months. When I was coming back, like everything was rotten and I had to remove this backpack. I haven't done it once, not twice, it was multiple times. So what if I would just have like a very simple device, a sensor that would be able to warn me that I actually left my uh, old uh, sandwiches in a backpack. So that's what I think about IoT, just connect the devices that can do very simple particular tasks. So that's what we focus on. And in IoT, to enable it, we are focusing on multiple areas. So one of these area is the MBTOS. That's the operating system uh, that is designed for Cortex-M devices. So very efficient, low par powered uh, devices. And it provides different stacks. So we have uh, proper security there and uh, multiple layers of the connectivity. So we support thread, we support Ethernet, Wi-Fi, 6 LoPAN, LoRa, and so on. What it gives the engineer is actually the possibility to focus more about the application and not enabling his device first. So it speeds up the process, which works very nicely because without this, uh, we will not be able to have like one trillion devices connected to the internet at the, at the year of 2035. So the second one is Pelion device management. So MBTS, it's running on the device. So that's one of the device I have today. It's from our partner, uh, NXP. So it's Freescale K64. And the second part is the Pelion device management. So uh, actually being able to manage the devices. 
So we have a simple portal that I will show you later in the presentation where we can actually manage those connected devices that are in a field and run the update campaigns. So imagine that you have devices somewhere in the field. It can be underground and you don't have an easy access to them. You don't want to send your engineer and dig them up first, uh, upload the new firmware, and then dig them in again. Uh, instead, when they are connected to the failure device management, we can actually schedule the update campaign and s select the devices we want to uh, upload the new uh, uh, firmware on. Last but not least is the embed-enabled hardware. So, like I said, we are working very close with our partners. And at the moment, uh, EmbedOS supports over 100 boards. It's, I think, around 160, 170-ish, and 400 plus components. Uh, so I mentioned a little bit about ARM, but how do we actually enable uh, all of massive community of users who are working on embedded devices. So we are doing it by providing proper tools. And that's one of the example of the tool. That's the online ID. Uh, it's pretty old. The code base is around 10, 12 years old. Uh, so it's written in PHP. Very, extremely difficult to maintain. That being said, it's quite powerful. So it's only in running in a browser, so it doesn't run on a desktop. But what it allows to do is proper code compilation. So I will show very briefly a demo. So we can just import the program, uh, build it. The binary will be downloaded, and we can just drag and drop it on the board. I will show it shortly. We have the source uh, control management, so Git and Mercure. We support both of them also with the private repositories. Uh, boards and modules, so we can pick a particular board or module that we want to develop on. Uh, something that we added relatively recently, like a year ago, uh, was Perion device management, so we have very easy access that we can easily connect the device to uh, our portal. Then export code if you want to actually work on a desktop IDs and documentation. So a quick demo. Uh, so that's online compiler. That's uh, how it looks like. As you can see, it's running in a browser. Uh, it's very simple, looks very simple, quite dated, I must say. Uh, but it allows like, all of the functionality I mentioned. So <coughs> I have the board. Nothing is running at the moment on it. I have a very simple, like, blinky example here. It's the code. Let's make it slightly bigger so we'll be able to see. Nothing fancy here. It will just blink every 500 milliseconds uh, an LED on this device. So I can actually compile. So what's happening now is the request is uh, sent to, we have the remote build API that you can also access outside of the uh, compiler. So everyone can actually send the request after the authentication. And ooh, that's why I should have actually pray to the gods of demo first. Because I, so that's another issue that sometimes we have, and that's one of the reasons that we want to switch to the new one. As you can see, sometimes, it doesn't happen very often, but we have problem with our uh, infrastructure, and what happens is actually we can't build the program. Let me try again, let's see. So once again, I select the program, I want to build, and I start the compilation. Let's see, I will be lucky this time. I prayed this time, so let's see. No, okay. It seems I won't be able to show this part of demo. Yeah, but that's the reason why we are actually switching to the new one. Uh, but what we also have is, what I mentioned, is actually boards, so I can select the board I want to work on, and we the boards that we actually supported, that's, that's the full list uh, of the boards. So moving, <coughs> sorry, moving back to the presentation. So that's the online compiler. As, we can, as you have just witnessed, uh, quite often we have the problem uh, with it. That's why we want to move. It's very difficult to maintain. So what we are doing to solve this, we've done 
an investigation and uh, we wanted first to replace it. So our primary target was to build the online browser ID first, simply because we have a lot of users that are using the old uh, ID and we wanted to give them the new ID. Uh, so we were working together with Cloud9 before they were acquired by uh, Amazon and we had the very simple proof of concept. Uh, we were using like the Cloud9, we enabled additional features. So after the board was connected, we were able to automatically discover it, even when it was running in a browser, and we were able to flash directly the program from the uh, Cloud9 to the device. Uh, unfortunately, we, we moved along simply because uh, we realized that what our users actually wanted is not the new on, not the new online ID, but rather the very good proper desktop ID. So the next one, uh, we switched to Eclipse. There are so many embedded uh, IDs based on the Eclipse. Uh, so we also very quickly uh, created a proof of concept uh, of it. We released the alpha version to a few of our users. The feedback we got is it looks, many users said that it looks too much like Eclipse. And that's one of the problem. <laughs> it's difficult to style it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that um, most of you that have worked in Eclipse, if you want to add even the simple controls, it's very, very painful. Uh, that being said, uh, it was working quite well. Uh, one of the problems was also missing auto update features. So we couldn't like update uh, the uh, embed studio uh, automatically. Uh, we were able to update the tools that we are shipping, but not the Eclipse. User had to redownload and the new Eclipse. Then we realized, okay, what we actually want is the ID that works in both browser and desktop. So we started the in-house project called What Web Application Toolkit, if I remember correctly. <laughs> that, that was the name. Uh, the name was based after the very good video, I'm not sure if you have seen about the JavaScript. If not, just Google it, it's absolutely priceless. And so what the technologies that we're using is quite similar to FIA. Uh, so the project was very quick, it was just three weeks, four weeks. Uh, one of the main, so we were also using the Monaco as editor. We had the experience before with Cloud9 who is using Ace, but we realized that uh, we much more preferred Monaco. So that's the one we used. Uh, it was also for the browser and for the desktop, but we focused first on a desktop uh, version more. And uh, one of the major difference we're using the blueprint there. So that's how it looked. Very simple, like I said, it was just three weeks of work. Uh, but we're very amazed how fast you can actually have it working. So the, yeah, the UI is not perfect, uh, I admit, uh, but it was working. We are shipping our tools together with it. We're able to package it, distribute it, auto-update it, all of the features that we wanted. Then at some point, we realized that there is already a project that is extremely similar and it ticks all of our checkboxes that I will mention very soon that we wanted to have. So let's give it a go. So FIA, that's actually, all of you know, that's, that's why we are here. So that's the screenshot and the GitHub page for it. Uh, so we started working with FIA in May last year. Since then we contribute uh, quite a lot, so quite often when we uh, know that the community of FIA will benefit from the change, we always try to push it upstream. So at the moment in our product, we are using FIA version 3.19, so that's the one last from the version 3. We are trying now to do the update to actually latest 6.1, probably first, and then the 7 that was released a week ago. Uh, very briefly, the architecture. So there is one major difference between FIA and what we are packaging, and that's 
tools that we are bringing. So Embed Studio, uh, it's using the FIA under the hood, but we are also shipping it with the tools. And tools are quite big. It's around 700 meg, 800 megabytes zipped. So we have ARM Compiler 6 to actually do the compilation, and better tools, so lots of uh, Python uh, uh, libraries, CrankD, so we are shipping it automatically. Uh, also, FIA works uh, with uh, CrankD to provide the um, uh, IntelliSense auto completion. And we are shipping it directly for the user integrate. So after the installation, the user does not need to do anything. It just works for him. Uh, then we have, we are also shipping Git, Mercury, together with the Python packages, and PySD. That's our uh, Python uh, tool. Uh, that we are using to actually be able to flash and debug uh, programs on a board. Uh, so, very simple uh, architecture. We are primarily focused first on a desktop version, uh, but after that, we ideally want to also have the browser version of Embed Studio. Uh, so, I would like to talk a little bit more about how we are packaging it. So that's something I, I think uh, you'll be interested in. It's quite unique, uh, mostly because there are lots of tools to be able to package. Uh, Election Builder is one of them. That's the one that we are using. The problem is Election applications are mostly used to just package the uh, node modules. It doesn't have like the proper concept of packaging all of the tools that we are bringing. So I would like to tell a little bit more about it. So what Electron Builder and Updater brings is auto-update feature, which is absolutely great. So it works on both Windows, Mac, Linux, that whenever we have the new version and the user has the previous version installed, on a startup it's checking if there is actually a new version, it automatically downloads it, and when user closes the embed studio, the ID, then under the hood we are installing the new version, and when the user comes back, the new version is already installed and working. Uh, like I mentioned, it has the support for Linux, Mac, and Windows, so all of the free platforms that uh, we are focusing on in Embed Studio. It also has the code signing, so, uh, and it's quite extended, so it also allows to modify it. So if you have the license server somewhere else, during the election builder process, you can actually send the request and sign your executables, either all the code or just installers, uninstallers, you can pick actually what files should be signed. It's very, very good and powerful. And last but not least, it gives the option to automatically publish to GitHub, Amazon S3, many other choices. So you can also have your private server running somewhere, but you can also um, just publish directly to S3 if you want to. So that's what we did. So we were using, we are, we are using Election Builder and Updater. And for Linux, uh, Auto Update works for AppImage. If you are not aware of it, it's the way of packaging uh, application that works on Linux. Uh, it works on almost all major distribution of Linux and it just packaged us one bundle. It has all of the tools, everything it needs inside of uh, this bundle. And you don't actually need to install it, so you just run it. You can move it anywhere on your disk and it will just work. Windows, uh, it supports ANSYS. Uh, on Windows, there are two main ways of creating installers. ANSYS is one uh, of them. Another is Wix tools, uh, very also uh, known. It's quite pow powerful. Uh, the language it has, it allows you to do a lot of things in, in the installation. And the um, uh, documentation for it is really good, so I highly recommend it. And it's easy to start also. Uh, for Mac, we are using the package installer. So uh, it's also slightly less powerful than this, but it also allows you to run the uh, bash scripts and actually modify files and install uh, particular files where you want. Uh, compared to DMG, which is just drag and drop, you can't actually easily move files around when it's installed on the Mac. And then the tools. So what we thought uh, first is we just package tools together in our bundle. 
on Linux, Windows, Mac. And that way we have the auto update for, from the election to actually be able to update uh, our application together with the new distribution of tools. It worked. There is one problem with that. So like I mentioned, our tools are quite big. The problem was that when we had the auto update, when we distributed the new version, so version X plus one, for example, to the user, what happened is first it had to download it. It was downloading in the background, that's fine. It took slightly longer, that's still okay. The problem was the installation time. So it was especially visible on Windows. So on Linux and Mac, uh, imagine, so after the new version is uploaded, user has the notification that after closing Embed Studio, it will automatically update itself. If on Linux or Mac user during that time will try to start Embed Studio, then what will happen, the new old version will still be there, the process of the update will be stopped. That's relatively fine. On Windows, unfortunately, all of the files during the update process are gone, which means that during all of the uh, update process, user is not able to start Embed Studio. And we are just the installation of Embed Studio with, with FIA. It's, we are talking around five minutes. Uh, we are looking and discussing how we can actually minimize and make the node modules uh, smaller so it will speed up the process. And then also all of our tools on top of that, which takes extra time. So user during the auto update cannot restart the embed studio for another 10 minutes. So it was unacceptable for us. So what we did instead is we packaged it slightly different. So we, Electron Builder was still creating everything for us, but we created a version with all of the tools and without. And what we're doing is during the installation process, we are moving the tools that we are bringing, so the Pyro CD, the ARM Compiler 6, outside of the bundle, installed on the default location of the user system. What it gives us is we can still, using the auto update, which is fast, it just, uh, uh, it ha also has the delta update, so it's updating only the, um, what it's needed when we uh, creating the new version, but we have a separate mechanism for being able to update the tools. And that's what we are do doing at the moment and it works very well for us. So the auto update process is still fast and we have our custom way of actually being able to update the tools. Uh, it also, if you know any good way of packaging and distributing tools and doing auto update, just talk with me. It's a very broad topic, so I would definitely like to talk more with anyone. I'm here also today, so please do. So a little bit more about our release process. Uh, so very briefly, uh, first we are doing the first few pre-releases, of course, when we want to do release candidates. Uh, but when we think we have actually the release that we want to bring to users, first we do the release branch. What happens after that? is the Jenkins is automatically create the installers for us. And we have the Jenkins slave separately for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And what is running on these slaves, it's Electron Builder that creates the installers for all three platforms. The process takes around 20 minutes, more or less, together with uh, uh, actually code signing and uploading the installers. So the second step, like I said, the built installers. So Electron Builder creates all of the installers on all of three platforms separately for us on each of the slave. The signing process starts, so we, uh, you don't need to sign the Linux one, but it's required to sign the Windows and the Mac. So Electron Builder supports it. For Windows we have, uh, like I mentioned, the signing is quite powerful, so we can have the license server remotely and we can just do the request, it is also supported. Then uh, we upload uh, our distribution on S3, uh, which Electron Builder and can also help you with, but we are using our custom method to do it. After that, we are actually testing the release. So we yesterday discussed about functional testing. That's something we are looking at the moment. Still quite a lot of our testing is actually the manual testing to find out if everything works. Uh, this process is quite long. Uh, and we need to make sure that everything works. Uh, 
and then we make actually a decision. If it's good to go, we distribute it to all users. The process is very simple. We already have all of the files we need on S3, so we just have a script that copies those files in a path that the user can access. It copies also the small version of the installer, so the auto-update will automatically happen. What it means is after we do the last step, do the distribution, the users that had the old version will be automatically updated on the startup of Embed Studio. Ah, yes, so we are out of time, so let's go to the demo and actually show uh, Embed Studio and how it works. Uh, at the moment, so we are still in the beta uh, uh, release. Uh, we have over 10,000 of users. Okay. Over 10,000 of users. Uh, but we are aiming for also the production uh, ready release and then we actually announce it more and uh, have more users. At the moment, the usage of our online compiler is much higher than that. Uh, so that's how Embed Studio looks like. Uh, as you can see, this is in the fee under ho the hood, so it should be relatively uh, familiar to our view. And uh, one thing that we extended is the toolbox. So as you can see on the top, this is quite uh, specific here. So we can select actually the program that we want to build. We can select the target. We support quite many targets, so I mentioned around 160, and we can see the boards that is connected. It will automatically discover, so if I connect, we connect the board, the Embed Studio will automatically pick it up and connect it. So I can select the board, I build, select the profile to be able to debug it, and once again, I'm running a very simple program that I will show you. So we also have the concept of the main program, so that's one of the difference. So the toolbox works on the main program. So you can see this program is selected, slightly bold. So every operation that the user will choose from the uh, toolbox here will be executed on behalf of the main program. And the user can very easily change this program either from here, right click. So once again, very simple example that I will just flash uh, on a board. Uh, so it's doing the building, it's using ARM Compiler 6 together with uh, all of the tools, and now it's automatically doing the flashing. Uh, when it happens, we actually have, I didn't have to click any reset, we actually have the program very quickly running on the board. Without any drag and drop, something that I couldn't show unfortunately with online compiler, well, after the build I will have to drag and drop the program and board to start it. So user does not need to do anything. Everything is just from within the context of Embed Studio. Uh, because we are shipping with Clang D, we also have the proper auto-completion. So if I want just to change the color from green, for example, to blue, uh, it gives me the hints. I can click the deploy, it will do the build. It's doing the incremental build. What it means, it will be extremely fast. So it already built, once again, it's flashing the program on the board. Once again, I didn't have to actually do anything. And if I will show you, now it's like fully blue. So it's extremely fast, so the process of actually uh, creating the program and get it on the board is very quick. Uh, another area that we improved, I don't have the internet, um, internet, so I will not be able to fully show you, unfortunately. So I will just show you very briefly the UI. Uh, we have the example for be able to connect this board quickly to the cloud. So Perion device management that I mentioned at the beginning. So we slightly added another widget uh, for the Perion device management. So after the user provides the API key, we can actually query our service to get the developer certificates. We can either create a new certificate, which I will do just now, and I can select uh, this certificate. And now, all I need to do is just build a program. It will, I built it in before, so to once again be fast, we we'll just pick up the new developer certificate and flush the program on the board. Now we will see the progress slightly longer, simply because the program is much bigger. So the Blinky 
it's extremely simple just doing the LED with embed cloud. Current example, we need additional library to also connect to the embed cloud. So now we can see the uh, process of deploying on a board, but it's still quick. Uh, if we do the drag and drop, it will be the same speed, but we don't have the overhead of actually uh, clicking, drag and dropping the program on the board. Fortunately, I don't have the parent here, so I will not be able to show it. it. Last but not least, something that we do not provide in a browser version is the debugging. So if I will go to the simple example, it will be easier to s show you. So I will once again very quickly flush it with the same program. So we just do the blinking of the uh, blue. And now I will actually debug it. So it's running the debug process. Once again, we are using the PyOCD uh, tool for that. Uh, and we have the debug adapter that works actually with the tool. So once again, as you can see now, it's not blinking. If I don't set the breakpoint by default, it's stopping on the first line in a main. And I actually can debug the program on this board. So if I will stop, for example, here, and set, so I just set the breakpoint. I continue to this uh, place in a code. It stops here. I can see the, all of the local and global variables for it. I can see that the count is zero and it gets automatically uh, incremented. So when I will click again, it will stop once again and I will see the count this time set to actually one. Uh, so that's where I'm time. So just just the few features that we added. We also added much more. So we have uh, using uh, uh, Osofia, we have the Git and uh, Mercury uh, support for working, which is really nice. And uh, forgot to mention, we also we were contributing a lot to uh, SCM to actually add the Mercury support. So we have the Mercury sh shim that also extends the uh, FIA support to also provide the Mercury. That's something that, that's why there was a pull request recently that enables the CM uh, functionality that we're so looking forward uh, to have. Uh, so that's the quick demo. In terms of what we are focusing uh, now is uh, we released the version for Windows and Mac so we can go on ism.com studio site, download it, take it for a spin and we are working on a Linux version that we have very close, so very soon there will be also a Linux version. After that, we are aiming to have the release 1.0, and then we will look into uh, having Embed Studio working in a browser to replace the old online compiler that I was showing you at the beginning with the new Embed Studio, but that will have exactly the same UI and provide the same functionality what we gain with just one code base to manage both desktop and the browser version of it. And that's all I had for today. Thanks so much. And <laughs> I'm not sure if we have time for questions, but if we do, I'm... Okay, yeah. If anyone... Uh, so something I had showed, we also have the built-in mechanism for feedback, so the user can very easily just provide the feedback and send emails. The feedback is really good at the moment. Th there are, of course, us some users say that prefer the Eclipse version, which is always the case. It's sometimes difficult to move particular people to like the new uh, one, but other people really like it. They really like the Monaco editor. Lots of people see the similarity with Visual Studio Code that they are familiar with which is absolutely great. They really liked that we are bringing all of the tools together. So just set without Embed Studio, setting up all of the tools takes a lot of time for the users. And with the Embed Studio, the installation is extremely quick. So we have lots of positive feedback simply because our users were waiting for so long for the proper desktop ID from uh, ARM for, the, for doing the embedded uh, uh, development. Uh, from time to time, so that's why we are still not yet on the version one. Uh, okay. We are, s ma our major focus at the moment is uh, libraries. Okay. 
our libraries. So we want to improve still the SEM. We still sometimes see issues when user is importing also the private repositories. So that's something we are slightly redesigning. So we want, so first we have want to distribute the Linux version because so many of our users are actually asking us to uh, distribute this. And then improve uh, also the uh, source control management. So where am I going? Yes. Oh, that's a great question. Uh, we are using extensions and plugins. So each, uh, we are still thinking if there is something we want to redesign slightly, but we have like extensions for most of the particular functionalities. Where is it? Uh, yeah, so we are supporting at the moment just uh, light and dark theme. No, not theme, uh, but uh, development teams that uh, work together and can spend time to work on stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Multiple, multiple teams working together? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, <laughs> I misunderstood. Yes, we are at the moment have around seven engineers working. So our main problem, to be honest, is uh, working at the same time on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, there's few differences in paths between them. So just enabling this, this what takes quite a lot of time. So we have some engineers working on Linux, some on Mac, some on Windows. Make sure it works. Yes. Uh, so that's the question that probably Rob, my colleague, will be able to answer more because he was adding it. Uh, as far as I remember, we are, so we are using the debug uh, adapt protocol, but we found the debug adapt protocol and we made it work also with PyCD, so with the tool I mentioned about to actually be able to flush the program on a board. We are revisiting it, so it's possible we find another adapter that we are thinking about switching to simply. But yeah, if you have more questions about it, please ask my colleague Rob about it. He'll be able to tell you more in details exactly how it works. Thanks so much once again. If you have any further questions, just find me and I'll be able to ask them. Thank you.